Hello and welcome to T2 Day 24 of Honors Precalculus. We will continue our journey through the world of parametric equations. So find the parameterization of a line segment between these two points. Remember, I want the first point to be at time equals zero, to be there when time equals zero, and time equals one here. You theoretically can do it with any times, but that's what I want. You might remember that this means that x and y are going to be in terms of t, and at the beginning point when t is zero, it needs to be negative four for x and negative five for y. Now, to go from this point to the next, we'll call that point A and this point B. To go from one point to the next, what's happening? Well, the vector you travel on, it goes from negative four to two, so it's gonna go up six, over six, to the right six, and from negative five to three, so that's gonna be eight, so six and eight. What that means, it's gonna be plus six t and plus eight t. You can test to see if this works by taking t equals zero. When you plug t equals zero here, you end up with negative four, five, negative five, but then when t is equal to one, you, you add six and eight. So what are you gonna get? Two and three, which is exactly where you wanna be. So remember, this six is the distance, the x distance from a to b. That's where that six comes from, and this eight is right there. So what it means to eliminate the parameter is to get rid of the t, and you can do this with substitution. x is equal to three t, so that means that t is equal to x over three. You can then take this value right here and plug it in right there. So you end up with y is equal to negative two times x over three squared minus one. And you can simplify this a little bit and you end up with negative two x squared over nine minus one. So what is that? Negative two ninths x squared minus one. When you graph that, when you graph that, we're not looking like, we're not trying to find something totally perfect here, but a representation. This will be a parabola facing down and you know that it's going to cross when x is zero it's going to cross here at negative one right there at negative one because when sorry when x is zero yep when x is zero it's negative one and where's it going to start and where's it going to end when you look at when it starts when t equals negative one and it ends when t equals three so when you plug in negative one into that you're going to get negative three so when t is equal to negative one you get negative three and then when you plug in negative one into the y value, you're gonna get negative two times negative one squared is negative two, negative two minus two is negative three. So it's gonna be here at negative three, negative three right there. It's not perfectly to scale. So at t equals negative one, it's at the point negative three, negative three, and then it's gonna go up, it's gonna go up a little more, and then it's gonna go down. Now where's it gonna end? You have to plug in t equals three. So one, two, three. How far down is this right here? How far down is that? that when t is equal to three, you know that x is gonna be nine, because you plug in three right there, and y is going to be negative 19. That's what you get when you plug in three into this. So that point right there, it happens when t is equal to three, that's nine, sorry, that's, uh, yeah, it's really not to scale, this is nine, <laughs> so nine, negative 19. So if you wanna verbally describe this, it's a parabola, parabola, facing down, and then its domain, is the way you can say that is the domain is going to be from negative three to nine and its range is going to be from negative three to negative 19. That's one way you can say that or you can say from this starting point to this starting point and this is from time equals negative one or index time equals negative one to three. So how do we eliminate the parameter here? Well first you do x minus two is equal to three sine t and you have y plus one is equal to three cosine t. All I've done is move the constants. So then that means that sine t is equal to x minus two over three, and, and then cosine t is equal to y plus one over three. And now if we square these, it, we can square these individually, so you end up with sine t squared equals x minus two over three squared, and then cosine squared t is this squared, you then add them together. So what do you end up with? You end up with sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to x minus two over three squared plus y plus one over three squared. This right here, as we know, this is the uh, I can think Babylonian identity equals one. So one, and if we expand this, you get x minus two squared over nine plus y plus one squared over nine 
multiply both sides by 9, you end up with 9 is equal to x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared. And the reason we put that over there is that we, we know what this looks like. This right here is a circle, but it's going from t equals negative pi over 2 to 2. Well, this right here is a circle of radius 3. We want to know where it starts and ends. So when you plug in pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, that helps you figure out where it's going to go and where is it going to start. So when you do this out, you actually end up with it just being the top half. It just is the top half. And you know that because x, when t is equal to negative pi over 2, that's going to be 3 sine of negative pi over 2 plus 2. So what's that going to be? 3 times negative 1 plus 2 is negative 1. And then y at negative pi over 2 is equal to 3 cosine of negative pi over 2 minus 1, which ends up equaling 3 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So it actually, let me, excuse me, I made a little mistake here. This center of the circle, this center of the circle right here, is actually going to be at x equals 2 and y equals negative 1. The center of the circle is x equals 2 and y equals negative 1 right there. So this circle actually, it starts at, it's still a circle, so what it looks like is it starts at 2 and then negative 1. That's the center right there. So what this means is that it is the upper half, but it starts right here at the point negative 1, 1, and that's when t is equal to negative pi over 2. And this goes up, it goes up the semicircle, 1, 2, 3, goes up like this, and then it comes down right over here. So at pi, negative time equals negative pi over 2, it's at that point negative 1, 1, right there. We can test some other points too. You plug it in, plug in the other end, pi over 2, so you end up with 3 times 1 plus 2 is 5. And that right there is the x value of that point. And then y pi over 2 is going to be 3 cosine pi over 2 minus 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so 0 minus 1 is negative 1. That's the value right there. So then you could put in the middle point here what's halfway between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. That's when t is equal to 0. So try that. You could plug in t equals equal to 0, and then you're going to see that it's going to go. It, the path it travels on is the upper half of this circle. And in written form, it would look like this. Upper half of a circle of radius 3 centered at 2, negative 1. So here we have someone, Lisa, and they hit a golf ball off the ground with a velocity of 60 feet per second right there in an angle of 45 degrees. And the wind is blowing against the path of the ball at 10 feet a second right there with an angle of depression of 15 degrees. So the angle of depression means it's going down 15 degrees like this. So this angle and that is like that. So you use the formulas to write these equations when you're writing a parametric equation. So it's x in terms of t. That's actually going to be, here's what you get when you use those formulas. So again, the 60s are in front right here and right there. The 45 degrees comes into play there and there, and then the angle of depression, the angle of depression is right there, oh, make it green, is right there and right there. So now it says, how long does the ball stay in the air? Well, to figure that out, you need to know when, when it hits the ground. Well, when t is zero here, when t is zero, this height is, I mean, this is, again, the height because it's the y-coordinate of the ball. What you have to do is you have to set that whole thing equal to zero. And this is definitely something you use your calculator to solve. What's nice is you can factor out a t and then divide, but you need a calculator. And when you use a calculator, you end up with t is equal to 2.490 seconds right there. But you need a calculator for this. Very hard to do without it. And then how far, that's the x-coordinate. So it's the x-coordinate when the time is 2.490. So you're plugging 2.490 into the x-coordinate, which is right there. When you plug it in, you end up with 81.590 feet. So use the formulas carefully and use your calculator and make sure you round to three decimal places.